This is the 7th uh, grade TCAP practice test for math. This is question number 41. The question says, look at the two triangles below. Which set of relationships would prove that the two triangles are similar? Now, we have to talk about what similar means first. Similar is like a model. Have you ever, maybe you've seen a model of a car. Well, the model of the car looks like a smaller version of the actual car. Similar triangles, one triangle is a smaller version of the other, but it has to be very accurate. Now, if you've actually done the models before, you would know that it requires, it, it's either a one-sixth model or a one-thirty-second model. Each part is exactly the same relationship in size to the big version. So if the door is one-sixth, then the wheels have to be one-sixth as well. Otherwise, you have this car with gigantic wheels and a small door. It doesn't look anything like it. So the way that we prove triangles similar is in one of three ways. The first is what's called angle-angle. If you lock the angle values in, so say angle A, and by the way, you have to use what's called corresponding angles, which would mean uh, the one that's just like the one in the little one. So in this case, the A here is the smallest angle, so I'm going to pick the smallest angle, and it has to be D. I can't have A the same as E or something because they're not corresponding. They're different angles in the triangle. Uh, and if I also have another one, so say angle B, and I can prove that that's equal to angle E, that's all that I need to do because that ang those two angles being the same as each other lock in the third angle because as you should know, triangles are equal to 180 degrees as far as their angles are concerned. So once you know what two of them are and they're exactly the same in both, you're locking in the sizes. Now as soon as I lock in those angles, the lengths sort of lock in themselves. I can only change them a little bit. You could try it yourself. So, so you, if I had a much bigger version, say this is exactly the same size, I can make a much bigger version, but it's still going to be proportionally the same as my original one. It's just a bigger version. So once I lock two angles in, I'm done. They're similar no matter what. So I'm going to look for angle angle in just a minute, but I'm going to talk about the other ways that you can do it before I get to that part. The next type that you can use is what's called side, side, side. If I can show that all corresponding sides, or the sides that look alike, the little one to the little one, the big one to the big one, are all proportional, I'm in good shape. So let's say that BC is 3, and then EF is 6. Well, all I did is 3 times 2, so it's twice as big. Well, if AB is 4, then I have to have 4 times 2, which is 8. And then AC being 5, I would do 5 times 2 is 10. Each one of those, so if I did a uh, little fraction for all of them, See, all their fractions are the same answer once I reduce them. So that means that those sides, uh, corresponding sides, are proportional, which means that these are similar because it's exactly the same thing just on a different scale. And that's one. That's the second way that I could do it. The other way that I can do it is something called side angle side. It'll just take me a second to erase all this mess. Side angle side. Now the key to side angle side is that the angle has to be in the middle. Otherwise, it doesn't work. If I lock this angle in place and say, once again, I said I think this one was 4 before and this one was 5. Now, if I can prove that this angle is exactly the same, or I know that it is, and I can show that this angle is 8 and this angle is 10, so my proportions are still there, so the two sides on the outside have to be proportional, uh, proportionally related, just like I said before, um, then I can prove that the angle, that it's similar because the angle and the lengths lock it in. If I don't have those things going on, or if, say, I make the bigger one again and this locks it in, and once again I have, let's say, 16, and I have this to be 20, because of the length of size, or because of the size of the sides, this automatically locks this size into a proportional relationship. So once again, it would be... Um, so I was doing 4 times 4, so 3 times 4 would be 12. It's just the nature, because the angle makes them go out the same direction as before, so the distance between them has to be at a proportion. So I can use angle-angle, side-side-side, or side-angle-side. So let's just look to see in our answer choices if we have one of those, and then we're done. Look at choice C. Choice C says that measurement of angle B is equal to measurement of angle E. So I've got this and this, and then it says measurement of angle C is equal to the measurement of angle F. 
Those are corresponding. Uh, B and E would be the two, uh, probably the two largest of the angles, and then C and F are in similar relations. They're uh, relationships. They're in the same direction. So if I were to turn it on a clock from B to C, I'd be going clockwise. Same thing from E to F. So I have two angles, two sets of angles that are marked in as being the same. So I meet angle angle. So the answer is C. Now I don't want to stop there. I want to look at A, B, and D. But if you want to skip out and be done, you can be. But let's talk about, about why A, B, and D don't work. Um, so in this case, I'm going to clear this off. Let's look at A. Now A says that BC and AC, or the, our, the proportion of BC over AC, is equal to the proportion of EF over DF. So we've got two sides, so let's look at the angles that they've chosen for us. And it says measurement of angle A and measurement of angle D are the same, or congruent. It doesn't help us. We it, It's got sides and angles and sides, right? But they're not in the middle. The angle's not in the middle. I would need angle B and angle E to be the same to even start to make that statement. So since the angle's not in the middle, you can't do it. It doesn't lock anything in. Things can get funky that way. So A's out. For B, same type of thing. I'm going to erase this out. The same type of thing happens here. So I've got DE. Maybe. I've got DE and uh, AB. Uh, I've got DF and AC. So they're, con they're you know, sides there. It, it's, it's looking good. Let's look at the angle they've chosen, though. B and E. That's not helpful in the slightest bit because of the fact that the angle's not in the middle. So you could do weird things with that. This side could be longer because of the nature of the angle. Uh, so the last one, measurement of angle A is equal to the measurement of angle D. So I'm going to mark those up as soon as I finish doing that. So this and this. And AB is equal to DE. And then uh, BC is equal to EF. Number one, they're not in the right place. Uh, the other issue is that it says that they're equal. If one of the angles is the same and two of the side lengths or the, uh, the sides that are alike, corresponding sides are equal, then you have the same triangle again. It's just exactly like it. They're not proportionally related in this case. They're saying that they're equal to each other, which can't happen if we're going to talk about them being similar because then they're just alike. That's not similar. It's exactly. So in this case, uh, the only answer choice that makes any sense to me is C, and that is the correct answer.